is you're not in control of your body you're not in control of your space you're not in control of what enter you enters you if they penetrated you you're not in control of any of that you you gonna fix that Oh, now it's just shiny. you get to this place of I don't need anyone to validate me, your mind can be free to focus on things that make you happy. This is Black Girl Thought TV, honey. Um, hey guys. Um, I really want to record things while they're fresh in my brain. So basically, someone on my Snapchat asked me about becoming more assertive. Basically, the girl and I started having kind of a dialogue about, um of the abuse that takes that that took place with her and she was like how do i become more assertive like because my abuser like i wait for men to initiate sex like i wait for all of that because my abuser kind of took control and he initiated sex and i'm just gonna i'm making this just in case this can like help someone if you have been abused by someone at a young age it was child abuse for her it was also child abuse from for me i need you to understand that literally and for a lot of girls if you've been abused your first memory of like Kind of pleasure and desire even though you don't find it pleasurable you have to understand that that right there like the first thing that comes in contact usually sticks with us so if that's your first kind of idea of a man and what love feels like and what pleasure and desire feels like is abuse is me forcing my will onto you and taking advantage of your position you need to understand that you have to debunk that and take that apart completely because they taught you things that were wrong my abuser would say things like you don't want you don't want to get me in trouble do you like i'm gonna get you in trouble so i allowed him to abuse me you gonna fix that oh no it's just shiny i realized I, I allowed men to mistreat me because i'm like oh no like i don't want to cause any problems you know but the thing is i would watch videos of me when i was younger before i was abused and i was so kind of small and sweet and docile and fragile and i'm like i know that girl like i know her and that's that's who i really am at my core so just kind of going back to to the girl she has to take apart all of that and the thing is self-awareness and who you are i went through 10 years of therapy so literally i figured out who i was and then i took it a step further by figuring out that part of me that i can only share with specific people so for example um i'm a submissive in my core like a lot of men say oh no you don't seem submissive or a lot of people a man says that to me what he's saying is he is not the type of dominant that can dom me like what he's expressing is you're not submissive enough for me and that doesn't mean i'm inadequate that means and i need people to understand that there are different levels to submission some women are naturally kind of submissive like just you know just in their everyday world and their everyday life they just really are submissive for me because i was abused so think about it abused at four until i was about 15. I was kind of hella submissive and hella kind of just sweet and, and cute and little and small like throughout this period. And then I got to a point like as I was going through like my years of therapy, I'm just like, wait, if I continue to be this kind of like small docile girl who's just like um, letting people do what they want to her, um, letting people take advantage of her, I realized I would have been abused my entire life right so what i did through my journey through therapy what i did was i literally took all of those things that i held dear to me those things that I, those parts of me that i wanted to keep like the part of me that's really submissive the part of me that really like has a very strong desire to um submit to my partner and kind of have a world of structure like bdsm is really about structure like that's what it's about so basically i took all those parts of me that I wanted to I like like I took those parts of me and I saved them right so there's a place inside of me in my core there's a there's a girl inside of me that I only share with dominant like men that like are my partners those that's the only time she comes out that's the only time that takes place and what happened was I realized that I had to put her to the back burner because if I was to stay that girl I would be I wouldn't be here I wouldn't be like hardcore and like hardcore feminist sex positive like comfortable in my skin i wouldn't be that if i kind of remained that girl. it's okay for you to in a way have dual kind of identities so there's the annie that most people see like kind of just like up front and i'm just like that's nice you're not gonna abuse me or play me or any of those things like that's nice you're not gonna abuse me um i'm gonna control my space like period I'm going to control my space like I'm going to be comfortable in my skin like you're not going to mistreat me like that girl 
is like the girl who like goes after what she wants she goes after she gets it like that's nice is what i want so i'm going to get it she's very kind of like in control very in control but then there's also that girl who literally enjoys the freedom that comes from having someone else control the space right and for me submission is about freedom and i don't think that most people get that submission is about freedom it's about my choice to say here i give you this gift so that girl that's inside of me that girl that has been abused that has been literally tampered with because she's like some people are really just fragile i think we all know someone who's just like yo you're too naive like you gotta grow up because you're too naive people are gonna take advantage of you it's okay to have that person inside but only share it with certain people right only share it with certain people learn that that is valuable that is a gift all dominants know that submission is a gift and all submissives know that submission is a gift for me to say hey i give this thing to you i give this fragile delicate thing to you to take care of and they delight in taking care of it right that's what it's about so when i was talking to this girl i'm just like hey you need to understand that you need to dismantle everything you learned from that person because basically what they taught you is you're not in control of your body you're not in control of your space you're not in control of what enter you enters you if they penetrated you you're not in control of any of that you learn that men control that men control your sex life that's what you learn so if you've been abused and your first memory with sex and with pleasure in these things is abuse you need to dismantle that tear that apart right because you have autonomy, you have control over your life, you have control over your body, you have control over all of that. So I literally, I want you like, and you can contact me, you can email me, like, whatever, like, literally, I am here to help and I am here to help these girls because there are women in marriages who are hella unfulfilled and hella unhappy sexually, because like, they just thought that they just kind of had to do whatever they had like, you know, well, since I was younger, you know, men have just taken sex from me. So I might as well just have sex. Cool. Like, and I really, 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 really want us to kind of think about, I really want us to, to understand that we have, we like, there has to be a sense of self-awareness. There have to be a sense, like if you're that girl, and I know a lot of girls that <clears throat> If you're that girl that literally says things like, you know, I love so hard and like niggas ain't loyal and like whatever, there's a point at which you need to take responsibility for forgiving all of yourself to a person that has not shown themselves worthy. That little girl that's inside of me, that's special, that's submissive, that's inside of me, that's hella fragile and hella like she'll do what she'll do whatever. Like she wants to please like her dom. That girl inside of me, you think I give that to everyone? You think I just go around like, yes, please, I'll do whatever you say. Like, no, it'll be abuse city. Like, no. But I understand that that is a thing that people have to work for. And I see so many people not valuing their commitment. They're just willing to get into a relationship with anyone and just move so quickly. And I'm like, no, I need you to value that. And that takes place when we separate sex and intimacy. So I can just have sex. Like, nigga, that's cool. Bye. Like, anyway. But loving me, being in my space, like sleeping in my bed, like, that is something that I hold dear because I value my space. I value my time. I value my commitment, right? And that's what happens when you learn to love yourself. You learn to love everything around you. You learn to love good energy and you don't allow foolishness in your life. So I really want us to get better. I really want us to learn to love ourselves because this constant like, I need somebody, I need somebody, I need somebody, like, oh my God, like boys, 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 like I need somebody. That's really just kind of, and don't get me wrong, I'm not like, don't get me wrong, I am I am all for a great fulfilling sex life, absolutely. But then for most people, it's unhealthy. For most people, it's, they're not seeking the right things, right? And I hate that the world has taught us, has taught women in particular that we can exchange our sex for love. You know, when we tell women, you know, don't, don't have sex until, you know, like you love him, Make, like wait 90 days, you know, like until there's love there, then you can have sex, like, oh, and then we have girls out here having sex and they think they're getting love in return. And then when they find out that's not true, they're heartbroken. They're heartbroken. So I need you to understand that what you have been taught is wrong. Period. Giving your sex away does not mean you get love in return. And using your body in that way is a disservice to your body. Like, it should be used to be like, yo, like, I want this. Like, let's do this. It's lit. Like, 
it's like it's like like people who have sex with you aren't signing a contract to love you forever and i think some people don't get that but then it goes a step further and it gets worse when we like have girls that feel so inadequate and have low self-esteem and so insecure because why does everybody leave me i know for a fact that there are a lot of girls watching and it's just like why do they always leave me they always abandon me like can't trust anybody you need to start taking responsibility for your space start taking responsibility for your body when you have sex it's because you want to have sex you want to experience the pleasure period and you want to experience with that person but understand that this does not equal love this does not equal i'm gonna stay with you forever and it shouldn't like there are probably hundreds of men that people are compatible with to have sex with but there might be five people that you are compatible with to build a life with so understand that understand the people that come along that you're gonna like literally be able to vibe with and build a life with and like yo it's lit those people are far and few in between but the people that you can have great sexual experiences with where you can learn your body you can learn what you like you can try some kinky things you can see what you like see what you don't like oh i don't like being choked but calm down but i do like when you spank me like there's a space for that so i hate i'm sorry i hate this idea of you know wait till marriage why so i can be completely underdeveloped like why so i can be in a marriage that's literally like the sex is terrible i don't care what anyone say if i'm a submissive and i'm with a man that wants an equal partnership who's not a submissive it's not going to work i don't care i don't care how much prayer is gonna be like no it's not gonna work so I, I, I hate what we're teaching girls and I'm really here to provide an alternative narrative because I hate it, okay? I hate it. It pisses me off. It pisses me off. And I think I'm going to post this like on my first day because like I need this, like I know, like I need this, I need this to set the precedent for what I'm about, right? I want us to be in control of our bodies. I want us to be in control of our sex. I want us to literally understand that we have to tear apart everything we learned about sex, desire, intimacy, because it's not okay. It's not okay. I was watching something today and this woman said, literally, the number one form of non-monogamy is cheating. Relationships are supposed to be a prison, a sexual prison. Like, I'm sure a lot of you have parents who are just like, oh, your father gets on my nerves. Like, I hate him. Like, I'm sorry. Is that what you think that, that, that love is supposed to look like? Is that what you think that we're supposed to aspire to? Like, we haven't had sex in 10 years. Like, you think that, I'm sorry, after 10 days, after 10 hours, but I got an issue. The think I need more. Like, oh, that sexual abuse is hard. It is a process. It is a process. The only way I was able to literally gain, like, my sanity and get back on my feet and fight the depression was to literally put that girl, that girl who literally was tainted, at just four years old i put her in a safe space she is safe she is safe and then me that you see now protects her she's protected right but that girl can be released and relinquish only to partners that are deserving of her only once you've earned it like so my love life is very simple if you are not a daddy dom if you do not identify if you do not know what that means if you are not like in the lifestyle and like understand anything i'm talking about i will not love you that is period. We will not be together. No, it's not going to happen. People who want equal partnership and equal partnership is, you know, I want, you know, I don't want to be in control of you. You know, I want like we decide everything together. And, you know, so, so, you know, no, I need a power dynamic. I need structure. That is what I need. So if that is not a man that wants to come into my life, we're not going to work. So literally, I cut out the middleman. I am wasting no time. I put people where they belong and literally the only way I can do that is to know exactly what I need so we people can come into my life and I'm like you don't possess what I need but hey you look hella good so we got sex it's lit defeat that's nice hey I, I, I need some D tonight it's all good but a lot of us don't know that because we're looking for love we're looking for this validation you know what we're really looking for we're looking for someone to love us the way we should be loving us that's what we're looking for and that's what upsets me that's what upsets me stop looking for someone to love you the way you're supposed to love you stop looking for someone to validate you the way you're supposed to validate yourself slap your own butt the feek oh you pick a shell like that's nice once you get to this place of i don't need anyone to validate me your mind can be free to focus on things that make you happy. having a business and it is beautiful and lovely but i only was able to get here once i literally learned to radically love myself once i learned to literally make love to myself when i masturbate like that's nice babe. i can tell myself my skin hella soft and i look hella good and these nipples hella good that's nice like i don't need anybody to come along and tell me that yes it's nice to have a partner but i don't need you to come along and validate me like because i validate me so if you're coming along, 
you're pro you're providing way more than just telling me I'm pretty like okay in control of our space start valuing our commitment start valuing like our time and like our energy like 